Welcome to Transformed by Grace, an in-depth Bible study of God's Word presented by the Berean Bible Society. Join us each time on this station as Pastor Kevin brings the transforming message of God's grace revealed through the Holy Scriptures. I just heard the latest forecast for Thanksgiving Day. Turkeys will thaw in the morning, then warm in the oven to an afternoon high near 190 degrees. The kitchen will turn hot and humid, and if you bother the cook, be ready for a severe squall or cold shoulder. During the late afternoon and evening, a cold front, like a knife, will slice through the turkey, causing an accumulation of one to three inches on plates. Mashed potatoes will drift across one side while cranberry sauce creates slippery spots on the other. A weight watch and indigestion warning have been issued for the entire area with increased stuffiness around the beltway. During the evening, the turkey will diminish and taper off to leftovers, dropping to a low of 34 degrees in the refrigerator. Looking ahead to Friday and Saturday, high pressure to eat sandwiches will be established. Flurries of leftovers can be expected both days with a 50% chance of scattered soup late in the day. By early next week, eating pressure will be low as the only wish left will be the bone. Thanksgiving Day is a distinctive holiday. It doesn't commemorate a battle or a birthday or some anniversary of an important event. It is simply a day set aside to express our thanks to God. It's special because it's a holiday that takes its name from Scripture, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is a time to remember, to heighten our sensitivity to the blessings we have from God. It's good. It can grab our attention, cause us to shake the cobwebs loose, and cause us to take inventory and remind us of all of God's gifts and blessings in our lives. And it rekindles in us the kind of God-centered gratitude that God desires and that God deserves. Gratitude to God isn't something that should pass from our minds with the passing of a holiday. Thanksgiving is a God-focused, faith-based response to God's working grace and goodness that can remain with us continually as we are sensitive to and as we note God's continual working grace and goodness in our lives. Gratitude is an appropriate response to grace. And as we grow in the grace of God and are transformed by it, it will make us more and more thankful. Psalm 136 verses 1 to 3 reads, O give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. O give thanks unto the God of gods, for His mercy endureth forever. O give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. Psalm 136 is a unique psalm because the same refrain is repeated 26 times, for his mercy endureth forever. In scripture, when things are repeated, it's for emphasis. And by the psalm, the Holy Spirit is driving this truth into Israel's minds and, and hearts that God's mercy is always the same. It never changes. It is never exhausted. It never fails, and it endures forever. And we in the church, the body of Christ, need this reminder, too, that God's enduring mercy never fails, never ends. And forever we will experience His mercy in heaven, too. By the psalm, we learn that the Lord has plenty of mercy and that He will never run out of it. Ephesians 2, 4 says that God is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. We need God's mercy for our salvation from our sins, and God is rich in mercy. And in our daily lives, we need God's mercy over and over again. And by this psalm, we learn that his mercy endureth forever. Psalm 136 reminds us that each step of the way in our lives, he is there showing us mercy. The psalm begins with, O give thanks unto the Lord. 
we don't just give thanks in a vague, general way like the world often put, puts it. You'll often hear people say that they're thankful, but they often won't say to whom. We don't just give thanks. We give thanks to a person, to the Lord. Specifically, we are to give thanks to the Lord, to God. We give thanks to Him. Verses 4, 5, 6, and 7 all say to Him, to Him, to Him, to Him. And we give thanks to Him. We give thanks to the Lord. And thanksgiving is to be given to the Lord because He is good. We give thanks to the Lord for who He is and because of His intrinsic goodness. He is good in and of Himself. The Lord told the rich young ruler that there is none good but one, that is God. We call all kinds of things good in life, such as this meal was really, really good. Or that person is a good friend. Or that was a good movie. But what we call good on this earth is tainted and imperfect. God alone is good, perfectly good. Psalm 119, 68 says, Thou art good and doest good. Out of His goodness, God does good. And in that goodness, He gives, He blesses, He works, He's always there and He's always providing. God's goodness is set apart unto Himself. It is perfect. It is infinite. God's goodness defines what goodness really is, what goodness means, and what goodness does. We need to be reminded of the goodness of God because the enemy of our souls, Satan, repeatedly tries to get us to doubt it. And because of the weakness of our faith, we often do. But as the old saying goes, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. God is always good. Always demonstrating His goodness. Always showing His kindness to us. Even in and through the things that take place in our lives that are not good. More often than we do in life, we need to stop and look, think, take note, take inventory of His goodness to us and give thanks to Him. We give thanks to the Lord because He is good, and out of His goodness, His mercy endures forever. Psalm 136, 4-9 reads, To Him who alone doeth great wonders, for His mercy endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great lights, for his mercy endureth forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endureth forever. The moon and stars to rule by night, for his mercy endureth forever. We give thanks to the God of gods and Lord of lords who alone does great wonders. He does wonders, and the wonders He does are great and marvelous. And He alone does them, meaning that these wonders spring from His direct and absolute power. God doesn't need help from anyone or anything to perform them. God is good, and God is great, and He is the Creator. And creation reveals His great wonders. And I love how Scripture does not argue the point of God as Creator. It just confronts you with it. There is nothing to argue. He made it all. It's as simple as that. He created all things, and all things are held together by Him. He alone is powerful and wise to do the great wonder of bringing all things into being from nothing, and to sustain it. Job says, He hangeth the earth upon nothing. It's held there by His power. The minute objects that are seen by a microscope are as great of a wonder as what is seen by telescopes. 
Everywhere we look in creation, we see the wonder of his handiwork. His goodness, his enduring mercy are seen in the great wonders of creation. By his wisdom, he made the massive and glorious expanse of the heavens with its detailed design and beauty. The psalmist details of God's mercy begin in the highest regions, in the heavens above, and it gradually descends in this psalm from the heavens to verse 23, to our low estate. Nothing is too high or too low for the reach of God's enduring mercy. We give thanks to God for that. In verse 6, we learn how the Creator stretched out the earth above or higher than the waters. He made the dry land appear, as Genesis 1-9 says, made it fitting for the abode of man. By His mercy, God placed light fixtures in the sky and made great lights. What a blessing light is. It is a blessing that we absolutely take for granted. We should give thanks that we do not have to make our way through life in this world, in a world of darkness, in the absence of any light. There is mercy in every ray of light, and His faithful, enduring mercy is reflected by the order, certainty, and regularity from those great lights. God's great lights shone on Adam at the beginning, and they continue to faithfully shine to this day on us. By His mercy, He made the sun to rule by day and provide daylight. The sun rules the day because God rules the sun. It is not the sun we worship. We worship the one who made it. Seeing the sun rise, seeing the sun set, sitting in the warmth and light of this great heavenly body, we should remind, it should remind us, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. By His ceaseless mercy, God made the moon and stars to rule by night, making subdued lights for the nighttime. No hour is left without a ruling light by the Lord, the ruler of we'll all. We'll be returning to the program in just a minute. But first, we'd like to take this time to thank you, our partners, for making these programs possible. If you would like to access our library of helpful Bible study tools, go to BereanBibleSociety.org. Rightly Divided Answers to Frequently Asked Questions is a paperback 248-page book written by Pastor Ricky Kurth. There are already so many books in print addressing frequently asked Bible questions that you might be wondering about the need for yet another. However, the Bible study principle espoused by mid dispensationalists, that of rightly dividing the word of truth, is the key that unlocks the Bible. We believe you will find answers to troublesome questions here that you have not seen elsewhere. To order your copy, contact the Berean Bible Society for pricing and availability at 262-255-4750 or visit our website at www.BereanBibleSociety.org. To receive our free, full-color, 32-page monthly magazine, The Berean Searchlight, call 262-255-4750, or subscribe online at www.BereanBibleSociety.org. Thank you again for your generous gifts. And now, back to the teaching with Pastor Kevin. Psalm 136, 10 to 15 reads, To him that smote Egypt in their firstborn, for his mercy endureth forever, and brought out Israel from among them, for his mercy endureth forever. With a strong hand and with a stretched out arm, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which divided the Red Sea into parts, for his mercy endureth forever, and made Israel to pass through the midst of it, for his mercy endureth forever, but overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea, for his mercy endureth forever. Another example of God's great wonders was his deliverance of Israel from Egypt. The psalmist turns from God's creative activity to his salvation activity, because the great creator 
is also the mighty Redeemer. In order to rescue his people from their bondage in Egypt, God smote the firstborn in Egypt in the tenth plague. The Lord told Moses when he initially sent him to Egypt, And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, Let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son even thy firstborn. Because Egypt severely oppressed Israel, the Lord's firstborn, the Lord threatened Pharaoh with the death of his firstborn if he did not let Israel go. Pharaoh did refuse to let God's people go, but God was merciful and sent nine plagues first to force Pharaoh to let them go. Finally, the Lord, at the last, after these nine previous plagues, fulfilled his threat to slay pharaohs and Egypt's firstborn. And it was because of his mercy, which endures forever to his people Israel, that he did it. Smiting the firstborn became the only means of their deliverance from bondage because Pharaoh and the Egyptians would not otherwise have allowed them to depart. On the last night they were in Egypt, Israel was instructed to sacrifice a spotless lamb, put its blood on the doorposts, on that night, God passed over their houses that had the blood on the doorposts and struck dead the firstborn of all the houses of the Egyptians. Because of that, by His mercy, verse 11 says that God brought out Israel from among them, and the children of Israel were freed from their captivity. God brought His people out from their bondage with a strong hand and with a stretched out arm. His power was revealed in the rescue of His people. And He brought them out with power. As He brought them out, God divided the Red Sea into parts and made Israel to pass through the midst of it safely to the other side. When the army of Pharaoh pursued into the sea, God overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea when they were engulfed in the waters, when God directed them to return to their place. It was all a never-to-be-forgotten display of the mercy of God that endures forever for His people, Israel. God's mercy was revealed in the deliverance, redemption, and salvation of His people, Israel, from Egypt. And God's mercy is revealed in the deliverance, redemption, and salvation of sinners by the cross of Christ. By the sacrifice of the spotless Lamb of God, who shed His blood to set us free. His mercy endures forever, we see by that. By God bringing us out of our bondage to sin, we see His enduring mercy. With His strong hand and outstretched arms at the cross, by His almighty power, He has delivered us from the power of darkness. For our deliverance, our redemption, our salvation, we give thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet, or qualified us, to be partaker of the inheritance of the saints in light. Psalm 136, 16 to 22 says, To him which led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endureth forever. To him which smote great kings, for his mercy endureth forever and slew famous kings, for his mercy endureth forever. Sihon, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endureth forever. And Og, the king of Bashan, for his mercy endureth forever. And gave their land for an heritage, for his mercy endureth forever. Even an heritage unto Israel his servant, for his mercy endureth forever. After Israel's deliverance, they went into the wilderness to travel to the Promised Land. Their deliverance from Egypt didn't conclude the mercy of God toward Israel because His mercy endures forever. The Lord led His people through the wilderness by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. For 40 years, God led the Israelites through the wilderness. And there were no paved highways back then, no road signs, no maps, no GPS. The Lord was who guided them, and the Lord was all they needed. And He is all we need, like He did with Israel. 
the Lord will lead and guide us, and he wants us to follow him. Thanksgiving was to be given to the one who led and guided Israel through the wilderness. And so we should be thankful for his loving kindness and mercy and leading and guiding in our lives through the uncertain wilderness of life in this world. Now, Israel's conduct in the wilderness wasn't good. Uh, they, their conduct of complaining, of rebellion, of unbelief in the wilderness tested. Does God's mercy endure forever? After the Lord had gloriously and mercifully delivered Israel from Egypt, they went after other gods, they sacrificed to these false gods, and they failed to trust the Lord to provide for them again and again. But God never abandoned his people because his mercy endures forever. The history of God's dealings with Israel, his care of them, in spite of their repeated rebellion and idolatry, puts on full display that God's mercy truly does endure forever. And it's encouraging for you and I, because when we stumble, when we lack faith, when we murmur and we question God's goodness or we outright rebel, we know he will never abandon, never forsake us, because his mercy endures forever. Verses 17 to 20 show that as the 40 years in the wilderness came to an end, Israel had been led by the Lord to the gateway, or within sight of the promised land. And the Lord on Israel's behalf, by his mercy, fought their battles for them, and triumphed over great and mighty kings, took their lands, and gave them to Israel. He smote great kings and slew famous kings. The Lord made short work of these so-called great kings or nothing compared to his greatness. What good was their fame? When they opposed the God of gods, they became infamous rather than famous. Sihon and Og were the two most mighty kings who blocked the way of Israel's entrance into the promised land. But they were no match for the God of gods and Lord of lords, whose mercy endures forever, and they were routed before him. Joshua 12, 1 to 4 reads, Now these are the kings of the land, which the children of Israel smote and possessed their land. Sihon, king of the Amorites, who dwelt in Heshbon, and the coast of Og, king of Bashan. The Lord smote Pharaoh at the beginning of the wilderness journey, and he smote Sihon and Og at the close of it. God gave Israel their land as an heritage or an inheritance. The Lord won the victory for them and gave them their land as an act of his goodness and mercy. And again, that reminds us of the cross. Christ our Savior is the one who has won the victory over our, over our sins for us at the cross. And then by his enduring mercy and kindness, he gives us an inheritance in heaven. And for that, we should give thanks to the Lord. Psalm 136, 23 to 26 reads, Who remembered us in our lowest state, for his mercy endureth forever, and hath redeemed us from our enemies, for his mercy endureth forever. Who giveth food to all flesh, for his mercy endureth forever. O oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven, for his mercy endureth forever. Like with Israel, God sees us in our lowest state or our lowest point, and remembers us because his mercy endures forever. Even just the fact that the Lord thinks about us is an act of enduring mercy. We should thank him for thinking about us. And Israel's lowest state, of which there were many, such as the Assyrian captivity, the Babylonian captivity, or any other time when Israel was humiliated or oppressed by her enemies because of idol worship and disobedience to God, God's mercy was enduring towards her. And God, in his forever mercy, redeemed and rescued them and freed them from their enemies. He provided for Israel's needs, like them needing deliverance from their enemies. And he provided and he provides for all, 
for even our most basic need, food. A demonstration of God's enduring mercy, which we see at all times and experience every day, is that he unfailingly provides food for all living things. We should be thankful for our food because God gives it. It's his provision. Every bite of food we eat can be traced back to him, originating from him. It is right and proper to give thanks to God for the food that we eat because it's from his hand because it's an evidence that his mercy endures forever. In verse 26, the psalmist implores, Oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven, for his mercy endureth forever. The title of God of heaven is full of honor. The Lord is God in the highest realms above all, over all, and yet in his enduring mercy, he condescends to us and our lowest state, and he cares deeply for each of us. And by the repetition of his, for his mercy endures forever, after each statement, you find in each event, God was in it, showing his mercy, showing his goodness. And in each event of our lives, he's in it. He's involved in our lives, and He is good. He has delivered us in our salvation. He is active in our lives in leading and guiding us, and He provides for our needs. When we stop and think about this, we should become filled with thanksgiving because we don't deserve God's mercy. And we don't deserve anything that God gives or does for us. But God does it anyway, because God is good. And as the structure of the psalm demonstrates, out of his goodness, God pours out blessing after blessing after blessing after blessing in our lives. And he shows his enduring mercy toward us in so many ways. And so as in Psalm 92, 1 to 2 says, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Thank you again for tuning in to Transformed by Grace. We appreciate your prayer support and the financial gifts. The purpose and mission of the Berean Bible Society is to help you understand the whole counsel of the Word of God. For more information, visit our website at www.bereanbiblesociety.org or give us a call at 262-255-4750. Or if you prefer, write us at the Berean Bible Society, P.O. Box 756, Germantown, Wisconsin, 53022. Now until next time, may you be transformed by God's grace.